What are you projecting in, in this year to do? Uh, so this year we're probably going to do around 100,000. Now I get to do it for myself and for my kids. And that's all because I became a notary. It feels like I can do anything. Another episode of On the Road with Jamie. How are you doing today, Jamie? I'm doing fantastic. This, <laughs> I, I, like, I look forward to every conversation. Uh, I'm really, really looking forward to this one. I think once people hear it, they'll know why it's so dear to my heart and you are so dear to my heart. Um, but I'm really, really excited. So uh, what great state are you in and city? So we share with everybody. So I am from California and I'm from Orange County. I share stories of, of some students doing $100,000 in their first year, $10,000 in their fourth month in the business. You're not that story. Your story no. of slow and steady wins the race, but you're more importantly, a story of lifestyle over anything else. And so I want to share that because I think a lot of people watch these thinking, oh, I just want to make a trillion dollars and don't really realize that this business is also about what you want out of it. And what some people want out of it is a hundred grand a year. Fair enough. But also what people want out of it is a $50,000 a year business that gives me a ton of time with my family. And so I want to share your entire story because I think your story is absolutely amazing. So um, let's have the conversation I've been looking to have for a long time. So why don't we just get people to the beginning, you know, why did you become a, a signing agent? So I became a signing agent because, well, first of all, I wanted to become a foster parent and the pandemic happened and I lost a job that I spent four years creating flexibility and financial stability. And that rug got pulled underneath me and I didn't have a way to be able to provide for an income. And when you're a foster family, you need to be able to have an income. And that was gone. And I couldn't have kiddos be placed in my household if I didn't have an income. And I needed to be able to have that. So I looked for something and my best friend said, hey, here's something, do you want to look into it? And I studied and I looked really hard and I thought, you know, maybe I can make this work. I think that I can be able to be, I can provide something that can give me flexibility with the kiddos that are going to be in my home. And I can work super hard and be able to provide them a life that I think is going to work wild for them. So some people who are watching may not know that I am a product of the foster care system and, and I, I am coming to tears um, because it is, it is people like you, Jamie, that are true superheroes. I'm gonna start crying. Um, and so it's, it's people like you who want to open up their houses that help children like me. And so for that, I just want to say thank you. Um, and, and it's a thankless job sometimes until they get older, but I would not be where I am and without the, I'd, I've been through a couple foster care families. And so without those parents, having the moment that you had, which is, I want to be a foster mom. I want to be a foster home. So let me just say thank you. And, and, uh, it's just an honor to be on this journey with you but because you were cut from the cloth of just the biggest heart that I could ever, I'm at a loss for words. And so, you know, can I ask you, you know, why you want to be a foster parent? So I came from a household, both of having adopted siblings, but I also came from a household of abuse itself. And so when I got older, I tried to get rights of my siblings. And no matter how hard I tried, I wasn't able to. And so I thought that if my siblings ever went into foster care and they didn't come into my home, that I wanted to be a foster family, that if my siblings went into care, that I was going to be the home that needed the soft landing that they were eventually going to go into if they didn't come to me. So that's why I wanted to be a foster family. There's so many kids out there that need homes. And more importantly, I wanted to be a home for uh, siblings. Uh, we actually have locally here in Orange County, we have a home for sibling sets and for kiddos that are older that just don't find homes. And at the time when I got my license, there were over a hundred kiddos that had been there for longer than six months. And uh, the States doesn't have orphanages, but that's kind of a pseudo orphanage here. And so we wanted to be able to place kiddos in our home that needed a place like that. You are the closest thing to a superhero we have, you know? And so it, it's I, without my foster parents having that same moment you had, I wouldn't be where I am in the position I am today. And so, you know, when I say I'm so excited to have this conversation, it's just, 
I'm having it with somebody who is just truly the loan signing system way. And you help so many other signing agents and you help helping children, you know, bringing it back to the journey. You must have been devastated when you lost your job. You've been, there's so, a lot of people don't realize the, the, the hurdles and what you have to do to become a foster parent. I have my own set of gripes with that, but I, I will agree that one should probably have income. And so, yeah, <laughs> you know, when, when you were working so hard and, you know, maybe with the idea of your, your own siblings need to be foster, be in your foster care and you lost your job and the idea of being a foster parent to your siblings or another family, like how'd that leave you feeling in that moment? Yeah. So my sisters, um, when that was like 10, 15 years ago when we were possibly getting them, but at this point it was devastating. We had gone through almost a year of going through the entire process and to just come up to this one global event that was like, Hey, sorry, like you have to put this entire process on hold was something that I didn't know how to deal with because I'm such a planner. I go through everything. I research everything. I was that person. And when we did day one of training, I had every single document ready. I was like, okay, let's go. Let's, let's do this. My home is ready. I've got beds ready. And to have this one thing happen that I had no control over was devastating. Like I, I didn't know how to handle it at first and I didn't know how I could be let go and mm -hmm. just have that completely gone after four years of working with a company. It was hard. It must have been an obvious double whammy, right? You've been preparing for a year to bring in another family into your house. Then you lose your income and now it's your own family you need to worry about. There could have been so many reasons you were down, but you aren't. You know I'm a flourishing business and you became a foster parent. And so I really love how the moment didn't define you, but you worked through it. So, so you know, I kind of ask on the on the just trying to feed you and yours, like, you know, and, and losing that money and all the other bills. Like what was, what, what was going through? It was, I don't want to say desperation, but mm -hmm. it was, okay, we need to get this done. I, I needed to figure out a plan. I needed to ask in for help and asking for help is one of those things that I've learned through this entire process that like you need to actually do it. Mm -hmm. And so it really humbled me very quickly to start asking for help. And that's actually how I learned about you was asking for help. Wow. I, I love the vulnerability in that statement. I think a lot of us tend to almost feel less than by reaching out, but sometimes that's the most important move. Life happens for us and not to us. And I say that because reaching out for help and just reaching out is what business owners do. And so it was almost preparing you for the mindset and necessity skill set that a business owner has, because you got to reach out. Like there's no living in a shell. And so mm -hmm. it's almost as if this moment was setting you up for the bigger moment, which was becoming a business owner. When I tell you that you have a, you know, a signing service and you are able to spend time with your family when you choose, when I say that to you, how does that make you feel? It is unfathomable because it it's, I can't even tell you it's, mm -hmm. I planned that this is what, this is why I became a notary because I knew this was something that was possible and I worked really hard to get here, but I still can't believe that I was able to get here. There's so many people who helped me to get here mm -hmm. and it happened. And I love every day that I'm able to be here and be at my house and my kids are at school and daycare and we're thriving. And that's, all because I became a notary and like, I, I wouldn't be able to do this with any other job. Like this lifestyle that I live would not be possible with anything else. One of the things I love about being a signing service owner is like, because of my effort, other people can put food on their plates. And I love yeah. that, right? It's like, because of me and going out, I'm able to give another notary that I'll probably never meet personally an opportunity to help support their family. And it, to me, it's like the signing service world is really the bodies what Jamie's all about. It's like giving back and it's about the world being bigger than me and being selfless. And to a certain degree, signing service owners are selfless. We pay really well. The good ones do like you. Right. And it's like, look, I could try to get a higher margin, but I want to help another family. And so what I love about what you and what you've done is this, this, this industry was meant for you because it's really an industry of giving back 
Mm -hmm. and, and you also do that to the foster care community. And so now fast forward four years, did you get your foster? Is it a license, foster care license? What is it? Yeah, so it's called, yeah. yeah, so it's a license. Yes. Yeah, so we yes. have our license. We got it on June 11th. Actually, it was my best friend's birthday who actually told me about you, by the way. So we got it on her birthday of, um, of 2020. So um, I got it um, the same year that I became a, um, a notary or that I started like becoming a notary. So it was, yeah. Well, share with everybody, including me. So you you lose your note, your foster care opportunity. You get your foster care license. Mm -hmm. you get foster children. Where are we today? Like fill people in. I know you were. You said ten minutes ago you were devastated. You didn't get your foster care license. Um, and so where are you now? Talk talk to me. Yeah. So um, a couple of days before Christmas, we actually just adopted our two kiddos that have been with us for three and a half years. So our kiddos came to us in October 2020, and we just adopted them right before Christmas. So we're super excited for that. <laughs> uh, I didn't realize you came from an adopted family as well. Um, yeah, so I'm personally not adopted, but I've right. got two siblings that were adopted from another country. They're from Belarus. <sighs> I found myself almost wanting to cry again. I, I just, there, it's people like you that help people like me. So thank you. Um, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be where I am if my parents didn't adopt me. And so with, with your kiddos, you know, on their behalf, um, I'm sure they'll say it as they get my age, but it, it, you're really doing the work that it, it's, it's, un, it's the unsung heroes like yourself that make massive impact on this world. And so just thank you for that. And I know that uh, it's really cool to see you come full circle with, you know, getting your foster care license, getting into foster care, and then making the decision to, to adopt them. So I'm a wreck already. We're 10 minutes <laughs> in this conversation. Yeah. And then to add a cherry on top, um, we're actually going to be reopening our home at the end of the summer to hopefully bring in some older kids in here to do some short-term care. So we're excited about that. This is why I do what I do. You know, it, it, it's, yeah. it's, you know, it's an honor to be a tiny, tiny part of your journey all the way around. <laughs> but um Thank you for sharing that with everybody because it's people like you that that are the unsung heroes of this country of this world who whose hearts are so big that it explodes out of their chest and so um it's a beautiful thing and it's an honor to be on this conversation with you man oh thank you so much yeah i our home would not be open we wouldn't have our kiddos if it weren't for this experience so because i found you and because i became a notary and because i'm a a signing service now owner now like i've like I, I get to do what I want to do. And I have like a life that I can mm -hmm. have in order to give my kiddos what they need. And like, mm -hmm. that's priceless. Like that's, that's what I intended to do. And that's what I'm able to do on a day-to-day -day basis. And I, I can't thank you enough. No, you are beyond welcome. I don't want to take any of the credit girl. I'm just the coach. <laughs> the players make the plays. But what I think is really inspiring about your journey it's first year in the business, you did $8,600. Second year in the business, I'm looking at my notes, you did $3,900. Third year in the business, you did $50,000. And what are you projecting in, in this year to do? Uh, so this year, we're probably going to do around 100000 And I'm going to go year by year with you, but let's just start at year one, like 8600 bucks. You see the Facebook group. I mean, it's the end of the world if they're not making $5,000 a month in their first year. Right. So why, why was it a success for you and, how, and why did you just keep stacking the years to get where you are today? So let's start with your one. So my life is so different from everybody else's. My day-to-day -day is different. My 24 hours looks so different from everybody else's 24 hours. Even if somebody else has two kids with the same ages as mine, my life is so entirely different. So the numbers that I see are amazing. And I'm so happy to see the numbers that I have on the page because I did that. Like yeah. I made that happen. Like though that is hard work that I was able to do. Like I can see like the ups and downs and I know exactly what I did to get that increase at yeah. the end. Like I know why my December was so big because I know all the little things that I did to get it that way. And it's, it's exciting to see. Well, I mean, what I want people to hear in that statement is somebody who is super present and that you're present in your own journey. It's not relative to what the rest of the community is doing. It's the rest of what you're doing. And, and I think too often that, 
you know, comparison is a thief of joy. The moment you're like, oh, they made $8,000 in a month and I only made $8,600 a year, that's the moment you lose. Mm -hmm. It's staying focused and present. We can cheer for everybody else, but stay present in our own journey. Because imagine if you would have given up after year one, you wouldn't be where you are today. No. And I want people to hear that. I think there's this misnomer that every notary is doing forty five thousand dollars their first year, eighty six hundred, and then you went to forty thousand dollars. So right. let's take this to year number two. You're making thirty nine thousand bucks in year two. Yep. Again, we're the heart of pandemic. You're going to conference. You're seeing these hundred thousand dollar winners. Talk them through your reality of what success was to you. And I think, again, this is inspiring because some people only put monetary value on what success is. You have success of making money while being present to my, my foster children. So talk about year two. You make 40,000 bucks, not burning down the barn. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you're not discouraged. You're super excited. I see you in the Facebook group for years, always encouraging people. So take people through the mindset year two, you're making 40 grand. So the big thing is I got to accomplish the scary C word. So consistency mm -hmm. every single month looked the same. So I'm so proud of myself. I didn't have big dips down. I didn't have like a falling off on anywhere. I stayed the same. And that's super cool when you've got kiddos who are all over the place. And speaking of my kids, they're the reason that I got into it. I was able to go to every single one of their appointments. I scheduled therapies. We went to court. We got to do visitations when we had visitations. We met with social workers. We even got to do vacations. We took them down to San Diego. We got to do all the life fulfilling things and all the necessary things while making $40,000. Mm -hmm. And that's why I did what I did. And that's why I'm happy at my numbers because yeah. Not only did I do the business, but my kids are super important to me and I got what I needed done with all of them. And like, it's just, it's so satisfactory, like knowing that like nothing got left on the table. Like I can look at last year and be like, yeah, like everything got done. Like every single one of their appointments, like good. All of their doctor's appointments, fantastic. All their social workers and all of their paperwork. Nobody was upset with me that anything was like not done. Like we're good. And I can't say anything bad about that. As much as I like sharing the big money, I almost love these stories more because too many people see this business and the only North Star is money versus time. Time is something we'll never get back. And, and it really resonates with me and my little guy who's six, right? It's like, no matter, I will never be able to unmiss that event. And, and for you to build a business around family I want everyone to hear that, right? It's that you can build a business. You're now going to break six figures this year. So it's been a slow build to build a business around your family, not the other way around. You mm -hmm. built a business around your family, not your family around your business. And I think it's more important to do the way you did it than the other way. And mm -hmm. so as much as I love the big earning jobs, the truth is if you're doing 100, 150 grand a year, you're missing nights away from the family. That's just the truth. There's no right or wrong way of looking at it, but I just love the different side of your building this business. Look, I'm four years in, we're gonna break six figures this year, but it's gonna be on my terms. Not the lenders, not the borrowers, not title, it's gonna be on my terms. So right. I hope people are really, 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 in, I know I'm inspired by you on so many different levels. So let's get to year three. You know, you make $50,000. Um, how are we feeling at this point? You're making $50,000. I mean, your signing service is going, you're, you're present with your children. I mean, what are you feeling at this point? I'm super stoked because I, while I love being a notary and it is great, everything goes to my signing service. So I get to do like a couple of things here and there, but it's all flowing through there. So times when normally I'd be stuck on the freeway or I'd be, you know, running docs back and forth. All of my favorite notaries are doing all of that stuff. So I get to schedule extra time with my kiddos. I don't have to worry about if I'm going to get a call for an appointment because I'm just going to push it through to my uh, 
through my signing service. And I know that my people, all of these amazing notaries who work for me, they've got it mm -hmm. because I've built such an amazing system of notaries and people that I've vetted that I know that they can handle it because I'm going to take my kiddos to Disneyland and they're going to have so much fun, but I don't have to do anything because my guys got it. And it's, it's wonderful. And that's what I've built. And I love it. This was always going to be built around your family. Yeah. And it didn't matter if it took eight years to get to six figures. It was, it, it was, I need to make sure that I'm there. My day's off for them and they have an off. I want off. I want to take Disneyland. And I love you're able to provide for other people's families. How come you're not discouraged when you have all these other big hitters? I mean, especially in the Southern California region. Oh yeah. There's so many people that can, uh, I'm surrounded by like the bills of you guys. Like there's like, amazing notaries with amazing signing services but our lives are so entirely different and mm -hmm. our day-to-days are vastly different we're just in two different planets mm -hmm. and my life is what i've built and i'm really excited for what it looks like today what it looked like yesterday and what it's going to look like tomorrow it's only getting better we have a tendency to try to keep up with the Joneses, not realizing the Joneses have a completely different schedule, right? We have some students who come in and it's like, oh, I made my $1,000 the first week, but they're not telling you in the background that their husband or wife is the number one realtor. And so we just see $1,000 and all of a sudden feel like we're failing when you're not getting the full circle. They don't have my 24 hours, like you said, they don't have my day. And so now in year four, you anticipate, you know, based on projections and revenue, a six figure business. I mean, when you think about having a six figure business with the freedom that you have of time, mm -hmm. just tell me how that feels. It feels like a great accomplishment. It mm -hmm. feels like I can do anything and I can't wait to see that once I reach that hundred, like I can't wait to see what 200 and what 300 and I, I've got like a BHAG, like a big, hairy, audacious goal. And I can't wait when I, when I hit it, like it's going to be like fantastic. You have a huge audacious goal, but the goal is not bigger than the real goal, which is family. Mm -hmm. and, and so I hope everybody heard that. Like she still has this massive, I want to build a big set uh, revenue business, but not in lieu of my family. And, and again, everyone's business is different. And but you're not letting the outside pressures affect you. And I, and I really, I'm saying this a lot because too many times students do, you know, they, they, they see $40,000 in the second year and thinking there are something's wrong with them where you're like, nothing's wrong with me. This is, I was able to make 40,000 and still be at every appointment, be at every soccer game, every whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's what's important. So I hope everybody really, really hears. Let me ask you this question. Like, you know, Jamie can build this business. Do you think anybody can? And why? Oh, for sure. Everybody can do this everybody if you can stamp this is easy all mm. you have to do is watch people sign and that's it this job is easy yeah <laughs> there's no, nothing else to it <laughs> I, 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 you know, what i love is how the simplistic answer that was i think we overthink the business right it's like look the more people would tell the more money's business we're going to get and you what i love about your story is you can build it around your goals and your goal was spending time with your family and, and foster children and giving back to them and giving this sense of normalcy to people, to children who don't know what normal is. Uh, and so again, this story is just absolutely beautiful. So um, I can't wait till you hit that six figure mark this year and we're gonna celebrate together. Um, but speaking of celebrating, you know, let's celebrate some other notaries, right? And, and so if, if everybody always wants the secret to building a signing business. So, if somebody can ask, if, ask you, Jamie, you've built this business, you're on track to, to be a big signing service and they can, you can only give one piece of advice to build on this business, to build a signing business like yours. What would that one piece of advice be? It's be everywhere all at once. So in your community, there are tons of networking opportunities. And when I mean tons, that is not an exaggeration. There is everywhere. There's pay to play. There's even things where you can show up and kind of surf without paying to play. So there's ways to kind of like kind of go in and kind of playing the system. But there's so much to do. So what I do now is I try to go into rooms where nobody knows who I am and make sure by the end of it, everybody knows who I am. Mm -hmm. And then I just show up everywhere, places where I'm not even invited. I just show up. 
And to the point to where everybody kind of knows who I am. And I just go to all of these events. And then I go to another area and I do the same thing. And I try to find places where people don't know who I am. And I just infiltrate that area. And I just want to become everybody's friend, figure out what they need. What can I do? What, how can I help your business? Who do you need? And I become this connector of people and I kind of figure out what they need and weave everybody together. And that's all what I've been doing for the past three years. I mean, look, I'm looking in the background here. I see Whittier Chamber of Commerce. I see like you are, I, I yes, I see. It's amazing. <laughs> And so th there's proof you are everywhere. And so yeah. what I love though is two things you said in that statement. I'm writing down notes like as you're speaking so I don't forget it. You want to go into places nobody knows your name. But by the time you leave, everybody does. Yep. And so being everywhere at once isn't necessarily only relative to networking events. It's when you're in the room, you got to be everywhere in that room. And so it's a total encompassing of understanding that if people don't know you're open for business, they can't give you business. Right. Is it safe to say that you would prefer to get a, a warm lead through a networking event versus going cold into a title office? Every single one of my big contract partners that I have are because of networking groups. Every single one of them. So I've kind of learned that that people seem to trust people a little bit easier if they feel that you're a warm introduction. Mm -hmm. So if I become a warm introduction to somebody, it's almost like a friend introducing a friend. So if I become somebody's friend, whether it's a actual acquaintance or if it's a friend of a networking situation, people are more inclined to start working with you. And that is how I've gotten most of my business is this way, is just showing up to networking events and that's how I got my first, my, my first direct client was because of a networking and I'm still working with her to this day as one of my science, my signing service clients is because of that very first, my very first place that I went to after my, after the first conference that I went to of yours, the very next uh, weekend, I went to a networking group and I met her and I've been working with her ever since. One of the things you said there is people like warm introductions versus cold look th there is not one right way to build this business some yeah. people love kicking down the front door of a title office and going right in i.e calvin darville and there's other people like jamie who would rather use a warm market there isn't a right or wrong way but i tend to agree with you jamie that people love some sort of familiarity so if you can create the familiarity either just through an email or more of a friendship it doesn't matter they just want to feel like someone they know can quote unquote vouch for you mm -hmm. and that's what you're doing you've learned that that's a more effective way to get in front of a title officer than walking in cold with a bunch of starbucks i'd rather walk in just in a, a warm introduction to get that in and so i hope everybody heard this but what i want people to hear too is you are very intentional with being everywhere at once. Yep. Everyone needs to know your name. Yep. And what the biggest running theme of every single one of these episodes is the same. I want to be of service. Mm -hmm. Jamie literally said, I walk in a room and I say, well, how can I help your business? What do you need? I think those are quotes of what you said about 45 seconds ago. Yep. And when people realize that business is about two people winning, not one person and the other person losing, when everything changes. And so you're hearing from another successful signing service owner that business is not about me, it's about no. we. And when that clicks, every single thing changes. Anything else you wanna to add to that before we go on to the next question? I, I just let them know that I'm not here to, to get business from them. I'm just here to see what I can do to make them hit their goals this year. Like, what can I do to make them successful? Mm. Like, I let them know my name, but I'm just here to be a connector for them. Like, I, people have told me sometimes that they need, like, a food truck. And so I'm like, hey, cool. I know somebody who owns a restaurant that has one. Let me connect you with them. And that's all it is. It's just about being a connector, being, like, a local celebrity. And you just want to be the name that somebody has in their back pocket. So when they need you they know who to go to. I don't tell anybody what I do because that's truly giving without expecting something in return. And I hope everybody heard that. Like they don't even know, I, well, I'll tell them my name, but outside of that, they don't know. I think the reason I think people get nervous at networking events is because it's what, what can I get from somebody? And mm -hmm. so you get this weird feeling of nerves because it's all about you. I'd be nervous too if all you're going to do is take, take, take. But the fact that you give, people don't even know how to return to you 
because you haven't told them what you do. All you're saying, like, look, what can I do to? What I love is your that line you said. What can I do to help you reach your goals? <sighs> like, drop the pen, girl. It works. I mean, <laughs> work. Well, it's, it, 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 it's it's like a real authentic statement. Like, you know, our question is like, what can I do to reach your goals? We all got them. And how can Jamie fit inside that 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 journey? And even if you can't, it's just that offering of an olive branch of like, what can I do to help you? Because that's yep. all people want, right? People want to know that you're not in it for yourself and, and you couldn't have had come up with a better, more <laughs> authentic line. I mean, again, what an incredible, incredible conversation. You've been in business for years, right? But if you can look back on your journey and if you, for is there any places you wish you would have maybe put a little bit more gasoline on the fire, what is something you wish you would have done earlier? And I ask that so maybe someone else can get inspired so they can do it earlier. You know, if someone else could emulate your journey, if you're like, dude, just do this one thing I didn't do. And I'm sure you can scale quicker now that I look backwards. What was that for you? I wish I didn't wait until I felt like I was perfect to start because I just wanted to wait until everything was perfect so I can get started. And I waited way too long. I wish I just would have just gone and just did it. And not waited because I waited way too long. I just sat there and didn't do anything. A lot of times people procrastinate or a lot of people are perfectionists because they're insecure of what someone's going to say if they do it wrong. Right. So I ask, like, how did you overcome that? Because I think that's the secret in your, your advice here. It's, it's once you understand, like, I'm waiting too long. So how did you make the decision to jump? So if someone's watching this right now, like Jamie, girl, I've had LSS for three months and I'm paralyzed. I need to be perfect. I've done 27 mock signings with my, <laughs> with my sister and I'm still paralyzed. What was it for you that really, how did you help yourself over that, that, that ledge? I actually remember the exact day okay. I was staring at my printer and it was right before mother's day. And I was like, I don't have kids. And it's almost Mother's Day. And the reason that I became a notary was so I can become a mom. And I had this like existential crisis of like, I'm stopping myself mm. from becoming a mom. Mm. So I sat down and I created a marketing plan to figure out how I can go market. Hadn't done any appointments whatsoever. And I went to the store. I bought a hundred white roses and I made this like little saying on there that said, I want to gift you a rose from one um, potential mom to another. And I made this cute little thing on there and I hadn't even done a single appointment ever yet. And I just started handing them out to like people. I don't even know what's going to happen from any of this. Like, I don't feel like I'm perfect. And I got a phone call from sitting in my car to do my very first appointment while marketing. So yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I don't know how to unpack this. You know, the first thing I want to I want to say is what happened is you threw your why in front of your face. Right? Yeah, that was the moment. Right. You know, when it was that moment of like, I forgot why I chose to do this. And so when and I think Jim Rome said it, you know, when your why is big, the how was easy. But it was forcing yourself to remember how massive the why I want to be a mom. And so like you almost force yourself to like snap out of it by throwing it in front of your face. And a lot of students right now, if you have a course for two or three months, re-ask yourself why you became a signing agent. And, and, but you said that was what you needed is like this reinvigoration of my North star. It's refocusing yeah. on, on why I chose this path. Cause it's almost allowing the fear to forget the why started calling all the signing services. And I, I mean, that was my, my biggest month ever, like up until that December. And I made a thousand dollars that month. And I was like, okay, I can do this. Like, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna make somebody lose their house. I'm not going to like burn up anything. Like I'm okay. Like I can do this. Like I can do this. And I just kept on trucking along. Uh, another thing I didn't know about your story till right now was you went direct before you did any closings. And again, yeah, I hope people heard that because one of the biggest questions I get, Jamie, over the past seven years of doing this is I know Sonny's going to go direct. I said, yes, it is you talking yourself out of it versus realizing. And so you are sitting here telling everybody watching that I got my first signing going direct and not having even one closing. And I think that's another part 
of a story that I had no idea about that's yeah. super inspiring. So now I'm gonna start using you as a reference of students <laughs> who went direct without doing any any signing service business. And so um, how'd that first closing go? Um, well, to add another thing on top of it, it was in sign language too. So it was like a double, triple, like enormous thing. Like it went great. Um, I know. And, that, it, and that's so. what I wanted people to hear <laughs> is that it went it great. It was wild and I loved it. Yeah. It took I, again, three I think hours. new students have this idea they they, they they have an idea of talking themselves out of something versus talking themselves into something and right. the talking yourself out of something is I have no experience. No one's going to hire me. Well, you got your shot on a difficult closing and boom, you created a relationship. Like those, are, when you are creating opportunities, when opportunity comes. Yep. And so I think you created your opportunity and they gave you a shot as a new notary because like, we're going to throw her to the fire. If she oh, can yeah. do this, she's going to be great. And, but again, I mean, what an inspiring part of your journey. I had no idea that you went direct. Um, but yes, I, so if anyone else hears this and Jamie, maybe Jamie's talking to you right now, like you just got to do it scared. You got to get out of your own way. You got to stop making up excuses and, and just realize and remember why you started this journey to begin with. Because your biggest regret is you didn't Not do it starting sooner. it sooner. I mean, you could have you could have became a mom sooner. You could have done a lot of things sooner. And it was really looking back uh, a decision you wish you would have made differently. But how do you see the future now versus four years ago when everything was just dark and dreary? It's endless. The possibilities mm -hmm. are endless. I can't wait. Like that's a very bold statement. It's a beautiful, it's an empowering statement. Did you ever think that you'd be at this point in your life where you're just like, anything is possible? No, because I've always been working for other people where I put my heart and soul into it, but I was always, you know, doing it for somebody else. And now I get to do it for myself and for my kids. And that's, that's an amazing thing to say and to put out into the universe that my hard work not only goes here, but it's helping people to grow themselves and not just going to like one person. And that's fantastic. You look back at your journey and it's, it's a journey to me of somebody who is hyper-focused on family. And too many times people only see money as what makes this business great, not the flexibility. And the fact that you've been able to Build a signing service. By the way, we haven't even plugged the signing service. Purple Notary Signings. A yeah. signing service sign up. Loan <laughs> students are preferred. Yes. Um, but, I mean, this is such a beautiful story of someone just being present on their journey, staying focused on where they need to be, and not letting someone else's journey dictate what if their journey is failing or not. Let's wrap up with this. If anybody's out there comparing where they are with, with you, Right, with anybody, what would you tell them? Your life is so much different from even the person sitting next to you. And I'm so excited for what your 24 hours look like and for what you get to do with your 24 hours. You are a superhero. And um, thank you for what you do to your little ones. And, and you know, like it just makes me feel so good inside that, that I know someone like you who's just willing to um, sacrifice their life to give to others. And so, um, I'm sort of crying. It just, <laughs> it, just, it, just, it, just, not, it makes me feel so good. There's humans like you on this earth. Thank you. So, you know, it, it is, you're doing the work. So Jamie, until next time, girl, go get them. Bye.